Lieutenant Dan here with a little, thought I'd do something a little different. I want to take you through the uh, steps of painting up these Kate B5N2 Japanese tactical bombers or torpedo bombers. Um, these are really the last ones I needed to do for my Japanese uh, pieces to be done. So I thought, hey, you know what? I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. I don't know, might be kind of fun. All right, so here's what I've done thus far. I didn't want to, I didn't uh, take you through the process of uh, priming these, but basically I used uh, over there on the right, um, I prime all my pieces with that flat gray primer. And then on the left, um, I found this, uh, it's an aged gray. It's a little expensive, but it looks good. And that's what matters. It's basically a chalky finish. Um, it is gray. I didn't want to have pure white. Um, you know, a lot of my my pieces, I should say pretty much all my pieces are really weathered and they're not coming out the factory floor or the showroom floor. And I want to have a nice, uh, just kind of weathered look. And this, it's kind of a, it's a really light gray. I think it's not the best here, but uh, you get the point. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's do this. Um, Thought what I do uh, first is we will go ahead and do the uh, let's do the windshields on these. I don't have my my silver. Where'd it go? Uh, here it is. I'm gonna use this. Um, I'm gonna use this silver. All right, it's pretty easy, no big deal. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, put a few drops. Gotta clean up all these troughs here. There's a couple drops here. Come on. Drop, drop. That'll probably be enough. Maybe just a little bit more. And what I like to do is uh, keep things kind of uh, thinned out. You don't want to have too thick a paint going on there. So one or two drops. And then I like to mix it all up. I've got some trashy paintbrush I always use. All right, so now it's not too thin, not too thick. All right, now let's go ahead and see what we can do. Well, this, this is pretty easy though. Got the, uh, ah, my fingers are all wet. Um, it's pretty easy. Pretty much just uh, slap some paint on there. Let's see if I can't get a little bit better light for you guys and myself. All right, here we go. Here we go. Hopefully you can see this. All right. So what I'll end up doing is it's a multi-step process. You know, you gotta let it. Put your bases down. And then I'm gonna go back and dry brush this. With uh, I have a technique I figured out to give it a little reflection. And what I do is I dry brush some black onto the canopies. And it gives it a a nice reflective look. You know, I've seen uh, I've seen other people do just you know 
pure silver, or even uh, I've seen a light blue. And then they will uh, paint in the All the, uh, uh, the structural cross members and things like that. And I personally like the uh, kind of a natural look by doing this um, dry brushing. So you'll see later, I guess. That's gonna happen later in the video. Right, so there's two. Number four. So I got six of these guys. Six tack bombers, and then I will be done with my Japanese forces. You know how exciting that's gonna be? To have all my base pieces done. Started this in October of last year, 2020. And I remember there was a time where I stated, I just wanted to weather my pieces up, not get into too much detail which is cool, you know? But, I probably said that because at the time, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to do, like, kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, and it wasn't until I put myself out there just a little bit, you know? And, uh, just kind of figure things out. I think one of my good attributes of myself is I like to reverse engineer things, you know? I see something and then my brain kind of goes into a mode where it tries to figure things out. And, uh, I guess that's how you learn things, right? You don't learn until you try. And so, I have come to really enjoy doing this. Great appreciation for those that are out there in uh, YouTube land who, uh, really do some nice painting. One guy that comes to mind is Corporal G. And if you haven't checked out his videos, I suggest you do it. Because he has some excellent videos on painting up your sculpts. on the old brush 
and we will do uh, what are we gonna do? Lieutenant Dan, what are we gonna do? Well, I think uh, I saw this in a picture and I think I kinda like it. So we're going to grab some of this flat red and we're gonna do a few droppy drops. probably take a little bit of effort to do because whenever you deal with dark colors you tend to have to do multiple passes oh what is that crap oh it's that thinner crap <laughs> Came on. anyway um, you tend to have to do multiple coats so Some of these, of course, I will speed through many others. All right, so let's go grab one of my first ones here. And what I saw in a picture on the web, which was kind of cool, is that, <coughs> excuse me, is that the tail was painted Um, and of course I just screwed up. No, I didn't. And it had a little sliver of gray still showing, which I thought was pretty cool, on the top from the uh, horizontal tail dailies. All right, paint's looking a little thick. All right. I'm gonna have to, one thing I gotta get used to is painting, talking, and ensuring that everything's in focus. All right, so let's go ahead and paint that up there. You can't see, awesome. Pretty easy, just paint. This stuff kind of goes on like a lipstick red. It's like a, has some pink in it. But once I do the old weathering, it will darken it up. Something like that. Let's check it out. Let's do one little pass. Right there. Come on. Spread it out a little bit. Eh, it's close enough. Like I said. Weather things, dry brush. It just covers up all the little mistakes. All right, one done. Number two.
right. Let's do number three. Looks like I should have did a better job sanding these down. Crap on the tail. Oh well. Issues, issues. That brush had crap all over it. it, wouldn't come off, so we gotta break out another one. Plus, I didn't like the point on it. Oh, yeah, this is oh, well, sort of. It's definitely harder, but it's kind of what I need. I need to be, I need to feel that edge. And this is like a pencil. Nice. Um, when I was a little boy, I used to uh, draw a lot. Started with doing the uh, the Snoopy. Doing uh, all Snoopy's. Ah, look what I just did. What I just did. Gotta wipe it off. There we go. Pretty good. It'll be covered up. I'll just throw in some weathering in. Clean that right up. Yeah, anyway, back to my, my deep story here. I used to uh, do a lot of sketching, and I started with doing the peanuts. And my favorite thing to draw was Snoopy resting on... Uh, he used to take naps on his, uh, on his doghouse. Anyway, I still remember doing that. That was like when I was in, uh, sheesh, first, second, third grades. Anyway. So, I'm a pretty good sketcher. I can't, uh, sketch people like uh, real life things mm. oh goodness sakes my dog is at my knee yeah. right now she's gotta go out you gotta wait Bella I'm in the middle of it you gotta wait um, I know you gotta wait I'm almost done don't rush me you're killing me um, what was I talking about? 
I don't even know what I was talking about. Uh, sketching. So I can sketch my cartoons really good. And, uh, you gotta wait, Bella. I know. You gotta wait. You gotta wait it out. Cross your legs. Cross every one of them. Yeah. Yep. I know. You gotta wait. She's like, Bella. Okay, just a minute. I know. It's okay. I got it. Okay. All right, guys. I'll be back. Uh, a little touch up on that one. Okay, I'll be back. Oh. Has been averted. No messes on the wood floor. Okay, so here we go. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Last one. Tips are starting to take me off. Oh my gosh, that freaking thing, that hair. <laughs> I guess it's horse hair, sticking up, driving me nuts. Did that to me on another video. Let these things breathe. We'll be back. All right, guys. It is time to do some more of these Kate Bombers. All right, so let's, uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, do a little uh, black around the engine and make it uh, converge up to the uh, the canopy there all right so that'll be pretty easy so I'm gonna use a little black and I like to not do things pure black um, I like to put in just a little bit of white uh, be nice if I had my white here it is so a little black and then just white. And I just, um, sometimes I just play it by, uh, play by eye. Um, so I just put a little bit of white down there and then I get my nasty mixing brush. And do a little, little dab 
a little bit. Mix it in there. And it's gonna need just a little bit more, so I just scoop up just a little bit. And then if I go over the top, then I just put a little black in there, which I kinda did. So, nobody panic. All you do is do a little bit of black. And then, mixy mix. Hmm. Maybe a little bit more. Haha. <laughs> That's what happens. A couple more drops. And I guess while I'm at it, I put in that medium thinner. So it's not so thick because now I got a lot of paint down there. And we'll mix it up. Yeah. It's about the color I want. Because if you get things perfectly black, then you're not gonna really see details. So, kind of dim it down just a little bit. Okay, so now, let's get your Get a nice uh, brush and let's do this. So the first thing is, it's pretty simple. Um, oh man, I hope my thumb isn't gonna be in the way. All right, I think we're good, except I can't see. Okay, I should, I should need the uh, magnifying glass. All right, did I pick up enough paint? So basically you see the, uh... wow, I don't like this brush. All right, this brush is out of here. So, it should be pretty simple. Anyway, you got these uh, little grooves. Um, little, yeah, you're not gonna see a paint thing. Um, you can just, you can draw between the lines and you can paint this. Super simple. All right, next thing we're gonna do is connect that black that I just painted to the canopy. After I make a slight adjustment on this one. Okay, so now we're gonna go and basically
Just do a little something like that. I don't know if you can see, but oh, I just freaking. Uh, all right, well. I just did a black dot, but I'll get it later. What I'll do is just uh, mix up some gray, really light stuff. And guess what? It'll disappear because I'm gonna dry brush it out and all that stuff and it just kinda disappears. Now, is that the look I want? I kind of want to have a little bit of curvature right there on the side, just a tad. Just a tad. Something about like that. All right, and on this side, Yikes, I gotta get the right angle. All right, do this side. Just knock off that corner. All right, looks like I gotta do a little touch up right there. Maybe I'll put it upside down. I don't know. Yes. All right, here we go. Five more to go. Right now, I'll take this flat red, do a couple drops in the old painter's tray. Maybe we'll use this one over here. And all I'm gonna do is put some red dots. 
where the propellers will be. Whatever that thing's called. Maybe the nose? I don't know. A little, a little doohickey on the, uh, the grief can't see this thing. I can't even see this thing. Oh. That's it. Look at that. It's starting to come to life. Right there they are, they're coming along. Talk to you later. All right guys, continuing on with the B5N2 Japanese Torpedo Bombers. What I'm gonna do today is do a little dry brushing. This one doesn't have much since um, I'm really just going to dry brush the canopies here and then I'm going to use a really small brush and dry brush uh, exhaust coming from the engine and make it go down the fuselage. Um, I couldn't really find any machine guns on these things other than on the back um, of the fuselage uh, with a, there's a gunner. He had like a 30 caliber sticking out of the window. Um, that was really the only uh, machine guns I could find, but anyway, so there's not going to be much dry brushing going on. Now, how I do dry brushing is um, is I get some paint and I don't uh, thin it down with anything. Um, I get uh, some paint all over the brush. I go ahead and wipe it off um, <clears throat> in the uh, little uh, cup there, and then I come over here and I wipe off everything that I can possibly do. And in fact, you'll, you'll think that there's nothing on there. Um, so you just keep on wiping, wiping, wiping. Go, make sure you do it all the way around. Also, make sure you have a, uh, this will pretty much destroy your brush. Um, so I've just been using this same brush over and over and over. And then uh, what I do is I do some little tests, you know. Um, this pressure sensitive, right? So I just kind of go and see if I need to remove more or not. Anyway, you'll know. So let's go ahead and do uh, this first guy here. Um, hopefully you can see, I think so. So just a little, a little bit on this uh, on the canopy. That's what I'm looking for right now. And uh, I just go back and forth. And uh, you know, you may think that it's not doing anything. So sorry about the angle there, but um, just go back and forth, and eventually it'll kind of tarnish it, which I can tell the eye that the silver is kind of going away which is kind of what I want it can stay in other places um, just not everywhere all right now I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and go ahead, dry brush the side of the fuselage now and uh, kind of do it uh, harder at the beginning and just kind of brush it down the side because that's where it would be most prominent. Okay, I'll go back and forth a little bit. And in turn, you'll get the, some of it will show on the wing, just because I have a kind of a 
big brush. So maybe the next time I do another one, I'll do a smaller brush. I was getting a little greedy. And hopefully you can also see the, uh, the weather, or not the weathering, but the dry brushing on the, uh, the structure, right, of the canopy, all those cross members. So you can start seeing it's uh, definitely being called out um, and it's not so shiny, which is what I wanted to get rid of. All right, so let's uh, call it quits on this one. Um, so here I'll just do a side by side. Hopefully, hopefully the lighting you can tell. So the one in my right hand, yeah, the lighting kind of stinks. All right, the one in my on the bottom is has not been dry brushed, but you can tell the canopy. See so how that canopy is less. Um, less shiny. <laughs> Alright, let's, um, let me, uh, just dab up this a little bit more. Alright, we'll just speed through the rest. All right, now I'm gonna take this super dinky small brush. And this is a little painful, but um, it's real thin. Problem is with those big ones, you can't uh, do like a trail down the side of the fuselage. It gets a little messy. So this one, you just have to work with it. So you just go back and forth. You get it to the color you want. Might get on the wings a little bit. It's logical. Kind of what you want. Let me get the. I don't know if you can see it, but it's definitely dirty, exhausty. Let's just repeat. Get your brush all nasty and then wipe it down. Like the thin one, it's not a whole lot much. So, alright, here we go. All right, here you go. Let's see what those look like. Some are a little different than others. It's all good. All right, so it, uh, the canopies definitely turned out the way that I wanted. Um, they're kind of dirtied up in that area uh, around the fuselage. Now what I'm gonna do is Let's go ahead and weather these up. So I'm going to mix up some of this um, Strong Tone Quick Shade by Army Painter. And um, so I guess uh, I'll show you how that works. All right, mixy mix. up 
This little can is done. I'm thinking I've done close to a thousand pieces easily. So uh, I've only used about uh, just a hair over a half. So uh, I think the um, I think the cost of this is like 26 bucks. So um, yeah, it seems a little be it is a little pricey, but it does uh, last quite a long time. Now, I have a pretty nasty brush that I've used along this whole time. Um, so I just kind of keep it in this little, little uh, jelly jar uh, full of turpentine. And uh, it's maintained its shape pretty good. So you definitely don't want to uh, use one of your best brushes to do this. So for this, probably need about, I don't know, about that much. And then what I do is get the, get the crap off. Go ahead and seal this back up. Inside. And then I need some Turpentine. So this is an uh, odorless turpenoid. turpentine. And uh, for this, what I do is uh, I usually just do a couple. I just take uh, what what's left in this, and then I just kind of move that brush around, and then I just drop it in here. Oh, sorry for the hand there. So I just get a nice, uh, I don't know, after a while you start realizing how the thickness should be and all that stuff. So I'm not going to tell you to do three drops, two drops, whatever. You'll just kind of know after you open up this stuff. Alright, then what I do, um, rats. Just get a little on there. And uh, just wipe it on. And I probably should have waited to let this dry. Hmm. Let me think about that one. I haven't done this like right after I dry brushed. So I'm going to uh, finish this one and then let these dry a bit and I'll come back. I don't know, looks pretty good. <laughs> Maybe uh, I'll just finish this one up here. It's kind of smeared as why. finish this one up and then so you don't want to glob this stuff on because it will just not sit well it'll get all gummy and so for this I really don't want it to be weathered too much just more to knock down the newness look and uh, Sorry, I'm not seeing that. That looks pretty good. Pretty good, I'd say. So I'll do a little touchy up here and there. And uh, nice thing with this is that it creates a uh, a nice barrier so um, to help protect it 
All right, I'm gonna just stop for a couple minutes and I'll make sure these things dry up and then I'll, I'll come back. <clears throat> All right, boys, I'm back. Let me go ahead and finish these up. All right, three more to go. And yes, what I will do is next, um, not today, it'll be tomorrow after these dry up, is I'll put a uh, coat of, I'll spray some um, flat finish on these. Let that dry up. And then I will add the decals, and then these will be done. You might be going, Lieutenant Dan, it's a lot of work for six tack bombers. Well, these are torpedo bombers, but good point. And, uh, but you know what? To me, it's worth it. Because it brings a lot of pleasure, not only from me looking at the pieces, knowing that I did this, I learned it, right? I taught myself. I can uh, take a lot of pride in that. And then I get a lot of enjoyment um, inviting people over and they're in amazement that, wow, you've actually painted all this? Um, it's kind of mind-boggling if you kind of step back and think about it. Um, you know, my, my journey with uh, Axel's Nile uh, started such a long time ago, uh, but I really didn't, uh, hadn't played it in forever, like decades. And then I did that, then I figured out how to do Photoshop and the map, and then I just being inspired with Sire Blood and everything that he's done, you know, with his table and all these things. And I was like, man, I just, I, I'd like to figure out how to do this stuff. So that's where YouTube comes into play. You can find a lot of sources out there, learn, you know, I picked up all the woodworking. I hadn't done all that. Painting. Start small, you know. Start small, and then I've been. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually going back on uh, pieces that I that I did, uh, you know, six, seven, eight months ago, and adding more details on them. Uh, because of things that I've learned just to make them even you know, that much more realistic. All right. All right, let me show you what I got. these guys dry they'll be really shiny that's army painter stuff uh, shines them up and then that's why I use a uh, flat um, finish spray and it dulls that down then I'll do the decals so until then all right I'm back 
So I spared you from having to watch me spray paint these with a uh, flat finish. Um, I use an army painter. Um, it is flat. I, can't, I think it's just army painter flat varnish or something like that. And uh, you know, after you get done weathering these things, they uh, they really shine up. So you gotta you gotta tone it down unless you you know you want that shiny look. Um, <clears throat> but here is the end result, and you can also see that I applied the decals too. So um, you know, I found that adding the decals to these uh, aircraft, I used to just only put them on the wings there, but adding them everywhere really really makes things pop out. I mean, I'm, these, uh, <clears throat> these tack bombers came out way better than, uh, than I expected, I guess. I, I guess I say that every time I, I start, uh, painting up something, but I am really happy with uh, the way that these turned out. Um, <clears throat> that dry brushing and the way the can canopies pop out. Um, so really happy with that. All right, guys, well, um, you know, I didn't know uh, how long this video was going to take. Uh, hopefully it's not too long, but, you know, I'm not sure, uh, you know, that many uh, stayed along for the ride, which is fine. Um, but, you know, there are a few out there in YouTubeville that, uh, um, yeah, are interested in, in seeing it. And I, and I hope uh, <clears throat> I have motiv motivated somebody into starting to get into this uh, as much as I have. I, I've just, um, I'm really, uh, <clears throat> I'm really uh, happy with uh, my progress on doing a, a miniature a painting. All right, guys, well, I guess that's it. Until the next video, take care.